for everyone. So uh, again, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, so the agenda for today's uh, webinar would be uh, to understand more on Gigabyte, their data center solution, what they have to offer in the high performance accelerated computing, and uh, an opportunity for resellers and partners to leverage uh, the solutions. Why Gigabyte and some of the case studies uh, or use cases where they have delivered uh, this mission critical systems. So uh, just a quick brief about people who, uh, who have joined first time uh, and uh, want to know who we are. Ingram Micro, we are one of the uh, technology uh, leader, global leaders when it comes to distribution of technology and supply chain services. Uh, we are a close to 50 billion revenue company operating sales in 160 countries and operating in 59 countries. We have uh, today uh, close to two, more than 2000 vendors that we work with to, to uh, promote and supply the product. And we have uh, more than uh, 250,000 customers worldwide. About Gigabyte, uh, they are one of the global leaders we know in PC industries have a very comprehensive portfolio and product uh, when it comes to consumer, business, gaming, uh, cloud systems, and they they, uh, they have been uh, investing huge on research and innovation. And lately they have been very much uh, uh, known for uh, some of the very known award-winning products uh, from a consumer uh, portfolio like laptops, mini PCs, and uh, other components that they have been selling. They have also known for a revolutionized uh, patent on uh, uh, dual BIOS and ultra durable technologies. Uh, they have uh, lately expanded their portfolio and invested a lot on research and development uh, into systems uh, supporting AI or uh, high performance computing solutions or applications. They have been in, in the industry for quite some time. They have been founded in 1986. Uh, today they have their operations uh, globally in uh, North America, Europe, China, Asia, and their headquarters in Taiwan. They have more than 7,500 employees worldwide, and they, they carry all the international certifications today uh, from uh, like ISO and so on. Uh, from uh, Gigabyte's journey from the time they were uh, incorporated back in 1986, uh, they, they were founded and they started their motherboard business, the consumer business that we all know. In 1992, uh, to 2000 for 10 years they were uh, known for designing and supplying solutions to Google data center and this is a few very few people know about uh, Gigabyte that they were actually OEM manufacturers for some of the uh, system giants like Dell, uh, NEC, Hitachi, Yandex uh, from 2000 to 2012. Between 2013 to 2017, they were uh, uh, they were involved in brand product strategy for accelerating uh, ARM-based 64 platform, uh, the uh, the AMD uh, Epic platform systems. They had uh, manufactured for some of the OEMs like HP, Cray, and Atos. And lately, you see that uh, they you see big product portfolio from them where they have launched some of the edge computing solutions, uh, liquid cooling solutions, and they've expanded their sales from Asia to other parts of the world, including EMEA and Middle East. So performance is, uh, it's in the DNA uh, from a brand perspective. They were first to the market when it comes to the world's first ARM64 based server platform. Uh, they were 
the world's first to introduce the AMD Epic processor second gen in the Edge servers. And they have a most complete second gen AMD Epic uh, server portfolio today uh, compared to the other um, system vendors. They are best when it comes to the performance and density. So the most dense 2U GPU server in the market, which is the G291 and the G292 series from Gigabyte is from Gigabyte. Uh, the most dense expansion slot, the 2U with four node servers today is from Gigabyte and they have the most powerful dual socket rack servers today uh, in their R182 and uh, R282 series. They also have one of the largest adoption of uh, CPUs from a brand perspective. They, today, their systems, they support Intel, AMD, Marvel, Qualcomm, and Amphia CPUs. And they have a complete second gen AMD Epic processor product series. Uh, They're also known for some of the other from a component uh, perspective. They also has a modular system design uh, from a motherboard black plane. Uh, they, uh, they, they are very much known today in the market for customization. They customize systems based on uh, customer requirements. So these are some of the uh, a key uh, a key advantage of Gigabyte today compared to others in the market. So accelerated uh, and high performance computing is mission critical and uh, we we know it's been uh, the solution from a solution point of view today. There's a lot of adaptations in uh, in the market when it comes to or in the industry when it comes to adopting high performance and AI workloads, right? We see uh, AI globally AI spending has increased and uh, as per uh, IDC, it's gonna even double in the next four years. So enterprise customers, uh, they all want to be competitive in this uh, econ digital economy and organizations and customers, they have started leveraging this technology. So customers are investing on some of this uh, technologies like AI, uh, recommendation systems, uh, fraud detections, logistic, medical imaging, AI in medical imaging, autonomous car. So these are technologies that are getting adopted more and more and which requires some of the systems like heavy, uh, GPU systems uh, to run this workload. So modern applications are transforming because of this uh, changes that are happening in the industries. Uh, there are uh, uh, systems uh, or accelerated uh, infrastructure that is required to power some of these AI workloads uh, like uh, systems that are used for process automation uh, systems that are used in smart city applications today uh, for hospitals, uh, smart hospitals. You also have uh, systems or applications today uh, doing anomaly detection, prediction and uh, forecasting. And then there are other uh, professional uh, visualization application or 3D rendering application uh, today. So all this requires, all these applications are requiring uh, GPU uh, uh, infrastructure or accelerated infrastructure to run them. So there is a great opportunity for partners to leverage uh, this accelerated uh, computing. For them, uh, as I mentioned, the uh, it's going to grow. The market is going to grow in next four years, going to double almost to 8 billion uh, by 2024. So for partners, it's uh, an opportunity to grow their footprint within their customers, an opportunity where they could start increasing their margin. Uh, it also gives them an opportunity to, to expand their portfolio, uh, uh, to upsell their portfolio, like upselling more storage network to their customers and increase their revenue. Further, it also uh, position them within customers to be a trusted advisor 
uh, con providing consultation to customers uh, to, to get the right performance uh, at the right value. And then furthermore, you could also get access to new customers uh, who want to expand or who want to uh, get into or adopt a technology like AI. So from gigabyte uh, perspective, the portfolio is very wide today. So today they have solutions on HPC. High, uh, they have uh, high density machines. They have rack bond server. They have uh, uh, systems that they provide for storage. Uh, they have workstation models, uh, systems that supports. Those are tower servers supporting GPU. And they also have uh, OCP, open standard based service today available. From a HPC perspective, these are systems that supports high density GPUs, uh, primarily used for um, uh, like workloads like designing, uh, designing AI, deep learning uh, for uh, virtual uh, or virtual desktops and also used for video streaming workloads. So these are some of the workloads uh, which use these kind of systems and they have more than 30 plus different models today available uh, supporting uh, NVIDIA, ARM, uh, uh, EPIC, AMD EPIC and Xeon processors. Uh, from high density, which is primarily used for, again, they are, uh, they are used for HPC, so they are basically in a 2U chassis, four nodes uh, using common backplane, common power supply, common hard drives. So these systems are primarily used for, uh, these are CPU density uh, servers used for HPC and virtualization use cases. So they have more than 20 uh, different SKUs today available. And uh, they have also have the standard rack mod servers, the purpose built servers uh, used for different IT uh, use cases today, uh, which is uh, highly compute and uh, they are high density in terms of compute, memory, and storage. So more than 60 SKUs available in 1U and 2U uh, models or 2U uh, form factor. Also has a storage, high density storage model available with them, which can be used for uh, uh, software as a service, uh, storage as a service kind of workload. Uh, work, there are workstations available, uh, three different models available when it comes to the tower workstations uh, series, all supporting GPUs used for high performance computing, um, HPC kind of workloads and also OCP series. They have around 18 different SKUs today available for uh, for OCP open standard uh, systems that are highly used in data centers or by service providers. From a GPU server portfolio, one of the highlights key highlights is a model which is G291 and G292. Right, this is a very unique design, uh, chassis design, which provides maximum GPU capacity and cooling uh, and can support up to eight GPUs cards in a 2U chassis. So the system that you see here on the right side is the same model uh, that can support up to eight GPU cards today. They have, uh, as I said, there are various models available. They also customize for customers uh, for specific requirements. So this is one of the uh, best series, which is uh, which provides the next AI breakthrough from them. So the, from uh, the architecture point of view or the CPUs that they support today, they have uh, systems that support both AMD and Intel CPUs available in 4U to 2U models. The 4U models support up to 10 GPU cards uh, PCI cards and the two year models supports up to eight GPU cards. Uh, the high density model, uh, the uh, which is basically uh, can be serviced also. So these are systems that are used for hyper converged uh, kind of a requirement, HPC requirement, very dense servers. 
uh, or these are servers what you call multi node servers used for uh, which provides all the uh, the compute storage networking in it to you form factor again they have nodes that can support uh, they have systems that supports both amt and intel cpus uh, up to 24 drives it can support in both sata sas or even nvme form factor so that's one of the reason they have so many different models because they have models that can only support nvme or there are models rightly available to support only sas kind of workload or even models that you see uh, which is the h262 which is uh, a model which supports all different type of drive so the drives which are uh, with uh, are the orange drives that you see are the NVMe drives and the SATA and SAS are the blue drives. So per node, it can support up to 16 8 channel uh, 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 RAM, DDR4 RAMs. It has got two expansion slots, PCI4 expansion slots, and also a mezzanine slot available for, uh, for further expansion. Every system has got two redundant power supply and a management port. From an edge computing perspective, uh, they are very unique to other vendors that you see because yes, uh, with 5G, there would be uh, a huge acceleration in terms of edge computing where customers want to maximize uh, the analytics that they're doing on the edge instead of getting the data back to the data center doing analytics at the data center or centrally, they would want to get quick, uh, they would want to do the analytics at the edge, get inside into data quicker and do take proper decisions. So with this, they have a server, uh, they have an edge server uh, which supports 5G connection. So it has got a network connectivity function as well with compute capability uh, and provides a low latency uh, and provides real time uh, analytics. <clears throat> so these systems are available in both uh, AMD CPUs and supporting Intel CPUs. Uh, one of the key advantage of the service is this service can be even serviced uh, from the rear. So usually from an edge computing perspective, this goes into environments which are exposed. No, they are not in data center, so they are uh, typically placed outside uh, even at hot uh, weather, they, they are exposed to hot weather. So they are uh, systems that are rugged uh, and uh, they are also placed in areas where you would typically not find a rack. So this is one of the reasons these systems can also be serviced from the rear side. So Gigabyte today supports both AMD uh, uh, GPU and also NVIDIA GPU. So with the recent uh, announcement from NVIDIA a couple of months back where they have introduced some of the new GPUs like the uh, A10, A30, A40, the RTX A4000, the RTX 5000 and 6000. So all this system, all these GPUs are today uh, supported on gigabyte uh, servers. From an HPC perspective, today they support the latest A100, uh, 40 gig and 80 gig uh, cards. They support both PCIe and uh, the SXM4 uh, cards with, which supports NVLink. Uh, all their uh, edge computing systems are supporting uh, NVIDIA cards, uh, the T4, the A40, A10 and A30, which I mentioned. From a GP virtualization perspective, uh, their systems are supporting the RTX A6000, which is the latest, uh, uh, the, the latest release like A5000 and A4000 are also supported. And there's also a new card, which is at the A16 card, uh, which has also been supported on these systems. From a uh, tower workstation perspective, which is primarily used for uh, like workloads like 3D rendering or for uh, users which requires uh, graphic compute. Their systems today uh, are supporting the uh, the RTX, uh, the 
RTX A6000, 5000 and 4000 series. These are some of the systems uh, which are using Intel CPUs and Nvidia GPUs. Uh, so if you look at the system on the left side, these are primarily used for HPC, AI and uh, edge computing. So the ones like the G492 system, this is the system which is supporting two CPUs of Intel with uh, eight SM, SXM for NVIDIA A100 card, which is primarily used for workloads for, for artificial intelligence, machine learning today. And they also have an offering in, um, in the 2U as well. So they have the G292 series, which I mentioned is the 2U system that can support up to eight GPUs in PCIe form factor. And also they have system which can support four GPUs today. So four GPU in rack mount uh, is a very unique offering today, which is a very exclusive design today available only with Gigabyte. From AMD perspective, they have systems that are supporting AMD's GP, uh, CPUs uh, along with NVIDIA GPU. So exact same models that I showed you in the previous slides are also available on AMD uh, CPUs. And they also, one of the unique uh, offering that Gigabyte has to the market is they in the same model for uh, the G492 model and the G262 model, they have uh, both options for customers for large data centers where you would have hundreds of these servers running. They also have a liquid cooling option today available uh, in the same model. So they have both air cool and liquid cooling mod, uh, available. From a standard rack solution, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are more than 60 SKUs today available uh, for offer from Gigabyte. Uh, these are general purpose built rack servers used for smaller workloads like web hosting, even virtualization or for database or analytics. It can be used uh, available on 1U, 2U and even 4U. They have systems that are available that supports mix and match of different type of drives today. So you could have SAS, SATA or NVMe drives uh, supported on the same same uh, on the same system and it can go up to 26 drives that can they can support on the system. They are one of the vendors who is also uh, supporting ARM based solutions. So people are using looking for alternatives to x86. They can use even ARM CPUs, uh, which is basically used for uh, like uh, applications like HPC applications and uh, mainly used for mainstream cloud. Also liquid cooling is uh, option available. As I mentioned, they have some of this high performance servers today in both offering both, both air cooled and liquid cooled. They have available so uh, Gigabyte today have uh, liquid cooling in terms of direct on chip, uh, one, pay, one phase immersion or two phase immersion. These are the technologies that they use today uh, in their systems uh, for, for customers who are uh, using their system for high performance computing, uh, for, uh, for uh, and some of the, reason customers want to use is to reduce the energy footprint in their data center and be eco-friendly and the OCP solutions these are very unique offering uh, they have these are this goes into big data centers to service providers where they use the open standard rack uh, systems which are primarily used using common power supplies for example like common power supply, common backplane, which are primarily used in uh, with uh, service providers or big data centers. So 
as you would have seen, the portfolio is big. The portfolio is very, uh, uh, the, uh, they are very cust uh, customized in the offering what they offer to their client. It's not a single model approach. They have different models available for every single customers who would have certain unique requirements. So one of the key reasons uh, why why Gigabyte is the technology. They are investing huge on research uh, and on technology. They have a very unique portfolio in terms of supporting different variety of CPU vendors today like Intel, uh, AMD or ARM. Uh, they have a GPU competing computing platform only vendor which offers uh, eight GPUs in two U form factor today. Uh, they have they provide all kind of support in terms of product level or product level support. Today they offer for uh, for the products that they're selling. There is uh, an option for uh, getting 24 by 7 uh, support uh, or uh, they also support the warranty in country and all kind of RMA support is provided. For EMEA, they have an assembly line. And the machines are assembled in Netherlands today. So they are, they have been there in the industry. They are one of the technology leaders, have three decades of experience in developing hardware and manufacturing them. Yeah, this, these, uh, this is a quick comparison in terms of how their machines are compared to other vendors in the market today. Uh, there is no apple to apple comparisons in this, but I can I can highlight some points here uh, for you to give you some insight. So uh, these are mainly using uh, for AI kind of workloads where customers are using uh, ML proof uh, inference. And if you look at some of these comparisons where uh, very closest you could compare gigabyte systems with an NVIDIA DGX A100. So in this you would see the in where customer using ResNet models. Here they are. If you see the comparison where a gigabyte system, uh, the G482 with Eight A100 card compared with a DGX A100 with eight A100 card. The only difference that you would need to see from an hardware perspective is this performance uh, benchmark is uh, compared to a A100 with PCIe cards of 40 gig compared to an A100 SXM with 80 gig. So if you look at this that NVIDIA gives 304,000, uh, 304,876 sample per second compared to a gigabyte, uh, which is 248,000. If you look at, there is a major difference in terms of the hardware, but there is not much difference on the performance, right? Uh, so it's basically the performance versus price, right? So. Uh, if you if you just compare the price between two both of the system, it's almost uh, gigabyte is at 50% uh, compared to a DGX A100. But from a performance perspective, the difference is only uh, probably only 20 or 25%. Uh, same with using different models, uh, there is a comparison. So here you would see a comparison. Uh, a DGX A100 using eight GPUs versus a gigabyte A uh, system using eight A100, right? Using SSD uh, ResNet. Here you would see a difference of only approximately 1000 samples per second. So when you compare the performance that you're getting from an NU India versus a gigabyte, uh, the the difference in a performance is very less, but however the price difference is huge when you look at it. and 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 this is a benchmark that is coming from Nvidia themselves where they are comparing their GPU performance uh, on their systems versus it's running on in uh, different OEM. And in this list, 
if you look at there is only two vendors apart from supermicro who, who has come into the competition in terms of a comparison so here you have gigabyte supermicro and nvidia themselves in this the only reason i'm not comparing uh, comparing this benchmark with supermicro because they their uh, systems are with a100 uh, sorry a10 uh, gpus so that's one of the reasons we're not comparing because of course their throughput would be comparatively less because the models are with only entry level uh, a10 gpus but the idea here is to show you what is the comparison difference uh, from a performance uh, point of view versus the price so uh, here we did a quick comparison where we have taken one of the GPU server uh, from uh, Gigabyte, which is the R282. Uh, and this system is uh, comes with NVIDIA GPUs and one of the NVIDIA certified systems coming with AMD Epic processor second gen with two NVIDIA A100 40 gig GPUs and uh, the systems has uh, 16 GB of eight eight quantities of memory and uh, uh, if you look at they have 240 gig hard drive uh, one TB hard drive 3.5 inch so primarily this system is used for AI AI workload like even for inferencing or some kind of machine learning AI workload. And if you look at uh, the price for this where. Uh, this the, the entire system is offered at 26,000 compared to other vendors like HPE and uh, other vendors like Dell in the market. So there is a huge price difference uh, compared to other vendors. So there is a clear value when it comes to when you compare this with performance versus price. The one thing you need to remember is these systems are scalable. You could have more more. Uh, you could have more GPUs to this and even you, as you keep adding more GPU, you would see the price difference would increase because some of these GPUs are sold by uh, the other OEMs at a very premium price to the market. So their price would increase as we keep on adding more GPUs to the system compared to gigabyte. Lastly, I wanted to touch base on some of the. Use cases or success cases that a gigabyte had in the past. Um, so. They had uh, have this specific use case or references coming back from Europe where they had supplied this to a large garden collider uh, beauty experiment at CERN. Uh, CERN is a uh, is basically a nuclear research institute where they had provided uh, the entire HPC system based on the gigabyte uh, 482 uh, HPC system with dual AMD epic processes using RTX uh, 2000 series and MI50 GPUs. So this is basically farm of uh, supercomputers, HPC computers processing enormous data of 40 terabyte per second. This specific reference is from Oak Ridge National Laboratory and this is the largest US Department of Energy Science laboratory which can uh, which is conducting research uh, so here uh, these systems are providing up to a performance greater than 1.5 exaflops and uh, gigabyte had provided the h262 series of the system for this exascale project so this is a project along with amd they have done this project uh, and and the project is uh, where they have supplied the Cray systems, right? So uh, in my earlier slides, you would have seen that Cray is one of the brands which is using the Gigabyte system. So uh, Gigabyte is manufacturing systems for Cray. Yeah. The, the next one is from the UK Research and Innovation. 
they are using uh, their supercomputers, which is based on Gigabyte uh, H.262, which provides uh, more than 11 times the performance of the previous series, up to 28 petaflops of peak performance. Uh, and they are using close to 6000 nodes here using dual AMD CPUs. The next one is from the European Center of Medium Range Weather Forecast. They are using the supercomputers from ETOS, which is supplied by uh, Gigabyte. Uh, Gigabyte is OEM for ETOS, and they use the HPC nodes, which are based on the R272 nodes. The German National Eurospace Center, they are using Gigabyte servers, which are purpose built uh, with the new liquid cooling technology, which is used for R&D in aviation, aerospace and transportation industry. They are using the Gigabyte H262 and the H, uh, sorry, R281 series based on AMD CPUs. And uh, they're using more than three GPUs per system. This is primarily used for visualization kind of workloads in research. In Zurich, the the ETH Zurich, the, which is the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich, uh, they are using uh, HCI systems from Gigabyte, the H262. They have more than 216 compute nodes, uh, which are deployed there, all using uh, two AMD CPUs uh, with more than 5 to LGB of RAM, and uh, all connected through InfiniBand HDR network. In Germany, the automotive design simulation uh, workload uh, has been deployed in Mercedes-Benz, where they are using the Gigabyte supplied AMD servers, uh, the H262. This specific uh, is from NAR Labs, which is National Center of High Performance Computing. Uh, this specific reference is coming from Asia in Taiwan, where they're using large computing and networking platform facility, which is deployed on Gigabyte S461 storage service, providing up to six petabyte of storage pool. So here I'm to the end of the presentation. So anyone of you have any questions, uh, I am happy to answer them. So.